What's up everybody, D-Man back. Welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Monarch News Roundup. That's right, in this video we are going to be continuing our chronological journey through all of Monarch Monsterverse news by taking a look at the events happening in April and May of 2022. Starting out, X Plus's 2019 King Ghidorah was spotted. We did talk about this guy a couple videos ago. I don't know where he was spotted at some toy convention. He's actually standing, I believe, next to the X Plus Godzilla 2021, and they look incredible together. Although I did see some valid critiques about this, stating, why is Ghidorah looking up? Because by having him in this awesome looking up posture, he actually looks higher than the other X Plus Godzillas, so he doesn't scale well next to any of them. Like, he's looking above all of them. That's a very fair and valid concern but just take a look at the craftsmanship here, guys. This is incredible. He's in an incredibly strong stance. Just look at those legs. Look at the muscles running through them. Look at the knees. I think that they have done an incredible job here showing the musculature of this character and how powerful he is, even though we don't normally get that conveyed in the movies. His feet also look better than ever, let me just say. I love that little hook sticking off his leg there. I like the way that the scale pattern transitions from this like rocky, rigid thing on the foot into this more bumpy one all the way up into the traditional scale scale pattern of Ghidorah. I've never noticed how well it transitions into this musculature looking chest that transfers over into the iconic ripples on Ghidorah's neck. I'm sure there's legit names for all this stuff in science, but I don't know it and I don't care about it. <laughs> I also like the really bulky scales on Ghidorah's shoulders that lead into the more rigid ones that go up the wings. And the wings! Oh my god, look at the wings! By the way, I'm also showing off probably um, just so that I can show them all off official X Plus promo photos for this guy because the official X Plus promo photos were released of him as well. But look at the incredible detail in these wings. I know I keep coming back to this one image, but it really is because this is our highest quality image and it shows them off the best. So much detail. The veins. Ugh. But it's so nice that they added them. I didn't even know they're in the movie, but they're here. And so much good detailing. The ripples, the bumps, the waves, and the wings. The, how powerful they look. They really look like they could make him fly. Ugh. They've done such an incredible job with this. And that's not even getting into the actual stance of him. They've done a really cool thing with the tails. They don't just have the tails pointed up or whatever. They have them actually in these kind of wavy poses. And anybody who knows my figure reviewings knows I love it when a tail can wave and wiggle like that. And so I love seeing it here. I also love the neck postures. I like that they're not all doing the same thing. I like that Kevin's got this really arched neck that gives him almost this S shape. Really nice stuff there. I like that Ichi's standing tall and proud and looking awesome. And the right head here, I believe that one's a knee. I believe that's the name for it. I like the way that he's also got this different pose. And they're all kind of looking in the same direction. They're all looking menacing. Well, except for Kevin, but he still does kind of look menacing. And I like the way that they captured the personalities within these heads through nothing more than this one sculpt. You've got the center head looking fierce and like the leader. You've got the right head looking angry and grouchy. And then you've got Kevin with the tongue out just showing that playful side of him, but he still looks like he can do battle. I'm really impressed with this. They also added that nice touch that I love that Michael Doherty has. I don't know if this is in the other Ghidorahs. I honestly can't remember, but that the horns on all the Ghidorah heads are a little different. So the center her head's horns are a little more curved and a little more like a crown. The right heads are a little straighter and so are the left heads, but there are some tiny little differences in them. Notably, the right head has more horns than the left head, or at least his horns are more developed. Maybe because that left head keeps getting bitten off. X Plus also does show him scaling off against their Godzilla 2019, which is nice. Again, I understand the complaints about the eye line. I think that is a valid complaint, but as far as I'm concerned, they look fantastic together. Another little Michael Doherty detail that I'm not sure if it's actually a Michael Doherty detail, but the way that the center head has the two rows of spines running down the neck and then the left and right heads only have one. I also really love looking at this side picture here. Sorry, I know I keep coming back to it, but it's because it's so beautiful. The side picture here showing the very, very snake-like pattern of Ghidorah's actual body. I mean, looking at Kevin here, the way you've got that one weird like vein running through it that splits it in half, and then the way you've got it, the neck pattern being different than the back scales, it's so snake-like. It looks just like my snake. I mean, they really, really killed it here. Maybe this is the God 
Godzilla 2019 that Ghidorah is standing next to? I can't totally tell. I see it's labeled as Godzilla 2022 in some images, which makes me think it's Godzilla vs. Kongs. But then I also can't really tell the difference between the one that they have him posed with in the actual promo photo, if, if it's not the same Godzilla, or maybe it is, and that they're just posing him next to the 2021 Godzilla for some reason. I'm not sure. To give some quick details on this guy, the X Plus King Ghidorah 2019 stands at 15.39 inches tall. That's pretty dang tall. The wingspan is incredibly wide, sitting at 26.98 inches wide. Holy cow. He runs you $607, which is actually kind of a fair price given the size of this thing, I think. The Rick version has LED eyes, mouth, and necks, which you can see here. Beautiful. I know that's also Spiral Studios did that. Great stuff. And I believe he went on sale late last year incredible. Oh, I love it. It's also a cool thing that Michael Doherty added that I also didn't really mention, but the way that Ghidorah's neck now has this glow to it when he charges up, that's something none of the other Ghidorahs have really had to my knowledge, and it's cool stuff. All right, I'm not going to spend as much time here. Um, the Jumbo Titan Godzilla 2019 project, we see it in manufacturing. There's just a bunch of them. This little video shows off that there's a bunch of them in this courtyard, so I'm not sure what these are again. I think these are the statues that we keep seeing on display, or at least similar statues that will go on display. I would believe that these are being sold more to vendors rather than to just normal consumers so that you can own one like in your house. All right, let's get into the Monarch news because there is some juicy Monarch news to bite into. Sorry I spent so long gushing about that. King Ghidorah. I just, I know it's a shorter video, so I figured why not gush about this thing that I think is incredible while I have the time, because normally I don't. All right, let's go through the Monarch news. So, Monarch updates. Good stuff here. I am very pleased with everything we're going to talk about. I don't know about you guys. I would love to know. Maybe I'll put out a poll or something, but where do you guys stand? I mean, I know I'm not very far into the Monarch news yet, so it's kind of hard to judge, but where do you stand? What are you most excited for coming out in the MonsterVerse? The Skull Island anime? I'm sure that's nobody's answer. The Monarch show, which which is my personal answer, or Godzilla and Kong. This Monarch news that we're going to be getting into over the next few weeks is the most beautiful stuff ever. Ugh, I love the stuff that we're getting here. So starting out, Monarch's first director was announced, and it is award-winning director Matt Shackman, who is from WandaVision, Game of Thrones, The Boys, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Now, that last one doesn't really matter, but I would like to say Always Sunny is my favorite television show. It's my favorite sitcom. I absolutely am obsessed with it. And Matt Shackman directs almost all of my favorite episodes. So that gives me an indication that he's got a really good handle on story. He's got a wide range. He can go from comedy like Always Sunny to action like The Boys or Game of Thrones. And his scope and scale seems to be great enough for Marvel to go, you did a good job with WandaVision. I thought WandaVision was kind of weak, but they seem to be happy with it. And the finale was not the best, but at least it shows he's got a handle on action sequences. I don't really remember his Game of Thrones episode, to be honest with you. Point is, Marvel loved him so much, he's also coming back to do the Fantastic Four. So if this guy is able to come back and he's going to be doing this massive block Buster picture. I'm sure he's going to do a good job with his episodes of the Monarch show. He's not directing all of the show. He is only directing two episodes. And as Legendary announced, he is only directing the first two episodes of that show. So I think those episodes will dive into the 2014 event itself. If I was going to take a bet, and you can quote me on this later, I'd be willing to guess we are going to, within the first episode or two, spend some time with our characters, probably Kate, because she's the one in San Francisco and her family, and maybe Hiroshi. I'm trying to reference my character bios less just because I want to start learning the characters, but I believe Hiroshi, Kentaro's father, also spends time in San Francisco and Japan. I think because of that and because he's tied to Monarch directly, I think him and Kate are going to be in San Francisco during the attack along with Kate's family. My prediction is we are going to revisit key Godzilla moments from that movie. I don't think we're going to see anything new. I think we're only going to revisit previous moments, but I think we're going to revisit if I had to guess. I'd be willing to guess we're going to see some alternate perspectives of moments like the Golden Gate Bridge, the Halo Jumpers, because we love to see the Halo Jumpers and we see them all the time. And, and maybe like the Atomic Breath or the Kiss of Death, maybe we even see an alternate angle of Godzilla heading back to sea. Now, I don't actually know. For all I know, they don't even revisit the Battle of San Francisco and we just move right on to the actual aftermath and, and hey, this is where the show picks up. It's already done. If I had to guess just based on the way that the MonsterVerse has gone previously, based on King of the Monsters, based on what people seem to be interested in revisiting from those movies, those are going to be the moments I would think we would see again. Maybe we don't see all of them, maybe we only see some of them, but my point is these are the moments that I think have the most potential, specifically the Golden Gate and the ending, either the kiss of death or Godzilla heading back to sea. I think those three moments are moments we might revisit, which would indicate to me these are the moments Matt Shackman is going to be working with. That's what he's going to be spending his time on, is those moments, not like Godzilla beating up new monsters that we really haven't seen yet. I mean, maybe there'll be a little bit of that, but I would guess because we're still so
so early into the show, that would probably be stuff I'm going to assume would come in the finale, not in the first pilot. I think the pilot is going to be mostly contained to the Battle of San Francisco. That would be my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I think some modern interviews of Matt Shackman might prove me wrong, but I'll discover that when I get there. <laughs> That's kind of the fun of doing this chronologically. Okay, so Matt Shackman is coming back as our first director announced for this MonsterVerse show. I'm very excited about that. I think he's a great pick. KDM posted more Monarch series details. Thank you to KDM for always keeping us informed and updated. I'm not really going to name everybody here, but I'll show them on screen. You can see the names. We have a new location manager, a new location scout. We obviously have Matt Shackman as director. We have a pre-production schedule, which you can see here started in the summer 2019 and then continued through March and April of 2021. And then it eventually led to current day and then filming was slated to start on July 6th and end on December 19th. We also have some studio locations. You can see the Vancouver studios they were filming at. So cool stuff here. You can read all of it for yourself if you want to. I saw a lot of people getting excited about this and I think it's quite a silly thing to get excited for, but Godzilla 2014's first assistant director, Jim Brebner, returns for the Monarch show. I don't know what Jim Brebner is doing on the Monarch show. I think he's the assistant director again, probably the first assistant director. I don't really know what else he's going to be doing in the show, what episodes, if he's only doing the first two or maybe he's doing all of them. I, I don't know. The reason I say that this is a silly thing to get excited about is because uh, assistant directors have no impact on the actual movie and <laughs> they have all the impact on set. The assistant director is the one making sure that everything is running smoothly. The assistant director is the one helping the director make sure the director doesn't have to worry about all of the fires that are being set on set. They're the ones putting all those fires out so that the director can work with the actors and with the director of photography and all that stuff. The DP really is a guy who has a schedule and says we need to stick to this. The these are the shots that we're doing today. You gotta stay on schedule, otherwise we're cutting shots. Otherwise, this is gonna happen, so keep it moving. The assistant director is really the grease that spins the wheels, not really a creative force pushing anything. So having an assistant director from Godzilla 2014 return may sound exciting on paper, and it's nice to know that the MonsterVerse family is so interconnected, but it really doesn't imply anything for us, the fans. My hot take. I, I wasn't excited about that. But I guess shout out to Jim Brebner for coming back. If you loved Godzilla, Jim, uh, then I hope you had a great time on this project as well. <laughs> Maybe I should just write off film school as a YouTube expense so that I can explain stuff like that to you guys. That's actually a freaking genius idea. Why have I not done that sooner? All right, a Canadian casting call was posted in May calling for people to join this MonsterVerse TV show. Don't have anything to say for it other than that they wanted to get people from Canada because it would be cheaper for them. KDM teased some series details. He says that we'll learn more about Monarch and its members, the Foundation, the Intentions, and the Monsters and Godzilla. So I have been able to confirm that this is going to be a show diving into the 17 monsters and counting that Sarazawa discussed in Godzilla King of the Monsters. However, we are not limited to those 17. That is 17 monsters that Monarch knows of that are alive. Godzilla can meet and kill anybody he wants in the context of this show. As long as Godzilla meets and kills people in the year 2014, or really, really, really in public in 2014 and in private before 2019, the continuity is still intact and that is what they're banking on. Technically speaking, I'll get really nitpicky here, but in Godzilla King of the Monsters, they state that it's been over five years since Godzilla has been seen, which means Godzilla really hasn't been seen since early 2014 when probably the Godzilla 2014 movie takes place in like May-ish. Technically, Godzilla really shouldn't be doing a lot of stuff during the year 2014 publicly, but I, I, I will give them a pass and say as long as things happen within the year 2014, who cares? Continuity is still as intact as it should be. That's a nitpick. KDM says we're going to be going behind the curtains on Monarch, looking into their tests and discovering enemies and dark top secret information. We also know that this show will have a direct impact on the new Godzilla and Kong movie, so whatever we're learning here is going to carry over there, and I think it has to do with these dark secrets and maybe shady people working within Monarch itself. That's very exciting. Next up, Doug Norrie reported on Giant Freaking Robot that Kurt Russell was in talks for the Godzilla series in April 2022. I thought this was very goofy because normally KDM is the one breaking the news, and actually KDM came out and was like, no, it's not confirmed, guys. We don't know yet. That's just a rumor, so give it a minute, which I really appreciate because it shows that KDM is skeptical and doesn't just rush into announcements haphazardly and get things wrong all the time. KDM came out and was like, hold on, don't get too excited. We got to wait and see. And then later in May, when it was confirmed, KDM came out and confirmed it as well. That's right. Kurt and Wyatt Russell, great picks, by the way, will be joining the Monarch television show. They were in talks in April and confirmed in May. I am so excited about this, not just because I love Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell, but because as we'll talk about, their character has wider impacts on the monster 
MonsterVerse as a whole. But that is great news because I saw a lot of people complaining like children because I guess that's just what people have become nowadays that I guess there wasn't enough white people for a lot of viewers and they thought it was woke propaganda because I guess their brains have been rotted and if I'm offending you, I'm happy about that. So I guess we've got some white people to make you happy. For the rest of us who are normal human beings, this is just another really exciting casting update and it's two actors who I think do incredible work and I'm very excited to see moving forward. Kurt Russell is one of my favorite actors of all time. I've loved his performances in things like Big Trouble in Little China and The Thing, specifically his work with John Carpenter I'm a big fan of, but I also love his work with Tarantino and whatnot. He's just an incredible actor overall. I was a little surprised to see he signed on to this show because, well, it's Godzilla and it's a little sillier and it's a big budget kind of like action movie. And then I remembered he's not new to this. He was also in Guardians of the Galaxy and I also didn't know until I looked it up today that he's in the Fast and Furious movies. So he is no stranger to big budget mainstream popcorn entertainment. And I know it's kind of a weird thing to draw the line where he is in Big Trouble in Little China and I think Godzilla might be a little too weird for him. But I guess when you see a name like Kurt Russell, I think I think he's a little more niche and a little more pristine in what he picks to do, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe that's just my perception of him from the 80s. Wyatt Russell, I don't really know a ton of Wyatt Russell stuff. I've heard he was great in Overlord. I've only seen a little bit of Overlord, but I do know I thought he was fantastic as John Walker in Captain America or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That he did a really great job in that show and I'm really excited to see him show up here. And it's also fun to see more MCU stars joining the MonsterVerse. I love that the MonsterVerse just keeps scooping them up. Just keep doing that, guys. They're good actors and Marvel casted them for a reason. <laughs> they are in talks to play a character, the same character, named Lee Shaw. Wyatt Russell is playing the younger version while Kurt Russell is playing the older modern version. Now, we're going to talk about this more later, but there is potential for a young Bill Randa cameo. That's right, Bill Randa from Kong Skull Island, one of my favorite MonsterVerse characters of all time. I think there's a lot of potential and we have heard some rumors that he will be in the show and Lee Shaw would be directly connected to him. I almost guarantee it. Also, I'd just like to point out that the name Shaw is a reference to actor Robert Shaw from Jaws, which is also why the character in uh, episode three of Ben 10, the Kraken, in the original series was named Captain Shaw because of that. <laughs> And it's kind of fun to see that the way the MonsterVerse does things comes full circle because we have Kurt Russell playing this character Shaw, who's a reference to Jaws. Meanwhile, Russell is Kurt Russell's last name, and I'm 90% certain that Michael Doherty yoinked that name and used it for the Russells because he's a fan of Kurt Russell. I think that's very fun stuff. The reason this is such a big deal is because Lee Shaw is a character from Godzilla Awakening. That's right, that comic book that all of us, including myself, was like, well, that's not canon. And then in 2019, or maybe late 2018, Legendary went, ah, it's soft canon. I mean, not all of it can technically work, but it's soft canon. It did happen. Just maybe some of the ages are changed. And now here we go. More references to Godzilla Awakening. Shaw appears in Godzilla Awakening and rescues Eiji, who was Ishiro Serizawa's dad. This was in the 1940s during a Shinomura attack where Godzilla appears. Shaw saves Eiji and then gives him a job at Monarch. Shaw works with Eiji his whole career and eventually is the one who gives Ishiro Serizawa his job at Monarch after Eiji passes away. Shaw is a young man in the 1940s, probably in his early 20s, and then a full adult in 1981 when he reconnects with Sarazawa and recruits him into Monarch. Kurt Russell was actually born in 1951, so he's actually a little too young to play this character, but if I had to guess, they're just gonna knock down the age of that character because again, Awakening is soft canon. It's not full hard canon, it's soft canon. So if I had to guess, they're gonna be taking a lot of inspiration from that character, maybe some references to the events of that comic book, but nothing too concrete. I think they're gonna take that and apply it to this character. I would be guessing that we're gonna be playing around in the 1940s through the 1960s, 60s and that's where Shaw is going to operate and I think he's going to meet people like Randa and maybe a young Eiji Sarazawa or something along the way. The book of this series will be set in 2014 with confirmed flashbacks to be set in the 40s and 50s so that's how we have this time jump where Wyatt Russell can play this young version and Kurt Russell can play the older version. If I had to guess based on my best intuition from what I know about the story of this show we're going to be spending the majority of our time with Kurt Russell. However because Kurt Russell is a higher profile actor and because the budget will go up with him, that makes me think that maybe we're going to be spending more time with Wyatt Russell's version of the character. The only thing I know for sure is that these are not cameos. This character doesn't just pop in for one single episode. This is a character who has wider impacts on the entire show and sticks around through at least a couple episodes. Is the MonsterVerse going to do the MonsterVerse thing and bring in a high-profile actor and then just kill them in their first appearance? Maybe. Uh, I would 
think maybe <laughs> based on the way that they operate but i would hope not i would hope that this character sticks around and can be in potential future seasons of this show well all right guys that'll do it for this one thank you for spending a lot of time on very little <laughs> with me today i don't normally get to dive in as deep with news as i did in this video and it was kind of fun i'm not gonna do it a ton but it was fun i want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on patreon for keeping this channel running it really really means a lot to me and their support really does help an incredible amount if you want to join the patreon you can use the link in the description below where you can get access to videos early, access to the Discord community, and more. And I guess we'll wrap it up here. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.